Welcome to part 4 of the snake game in Flash CS6. In this tutorial we're talking about the function new food. Remember that you can always download this FLA file at uh, hunkim.com slash share slash snake dot FLA. So now let's talk about this function new food. Somehow we're figuring out the random X position and Y position on the board. Um, you might want to better use a random uh, number uh, generator as opposed to using this weird uh, logic here, but that's up to you. We're just correcting the slightly off by uh, half a um, block error here. And somehow here in this loop, um, we're trying to determine the X and Y position of the food. However, what if the new food this location is actually on the snake itself, like on the tail or any of its body parts. In that case, we need to recall again the function because this uh, overlapping food location is not acceptable. So we're looping through every single part of the snake, counting down from the end all the way to the beginning, and it's asking if if the food x is also the same as that particular part's x and, as logical and, the food's y position is equals to that particular uh, snake's y position, so it means indeed there is a collision, so we need to recall the function new food. Now let's take a look at this function called change direction. So somehow it takes a keyboard event, so after you, the user presses the keyboard, just follow this uh, design uh, coding pattern to figure out that this uh, uh, key uh, code represents uh, some kind of up, left, down, right arrow button. And we, what we have here is um, somehow if you push left key, it, the direction is set to left, the string string left, and the head dot rotation is negative 180. So this is the uh, angle. Negative uh, 180 is uh, it's going all the way 180 degrees, half a circle, so it's going to flip to the left. And notice how this code here looks almost the same as the top part, and this is repeated for every single other direction. Let's figure out what's happening here. The distinction between this first chunk and the second chunk is that in the case where the parts array dot length is 1, so basically there's only the head, nothing else. If it's the case where you're just the head, then you're free to move uh, left if you push left. So if you push left, uh, you're allowed to uh, just move any direction you wish. It's fine. However, uh, if you are um, in the case where the array is not one, say you have a tail. If you have a tail, whether it be short or a long tail, if you're um, pushing right already, so if the direction is right, uh, then then uh, you should not be able to go back into yourself. So uh, the, the uh, condition here is only if you're not equals to, this means logical not, only if you're not already going right are you allowed to go back into yourself and collide into yourself. So this is a bit of logic just to make the game not so glitchy. If you're traveling one direction you don't want to suddenly go back into yourself. You shouldn't be given that option, you should only be able to go in three directions, either forward, to your left, or to your right. That's the same kind of pattern repeated throughout here. So kind of the same same stuff here, here, if you're going um, up, so if you're already going down, you shouldn't be able to go up. And uh, rotation is dealing with degrees, so there's 360 deg degrees in a circle. So whether you're talking about a negative 90, a little bit to the left, or 90, 90 means a right angle to the right, it's kind of the same stuff happening here. And so we have a piece of code here, if not running. This is the same thing as saying if running is uh, equal equals false. That's the same uh, code as this, so not running. So if this is uh, indeed if this is false, uh, then we're going to set it running to true. And the idea here is that at the beginning of the game your snake's not moving, it's not running. So we just want to flag, we don't want to move right away, just gonna, the snake is going to stay there. So when I press Control enter 
you can see the snake is just staying there and it's not running. However, once you actually press the key, and of course it's running, and then now it's true and it's continuing to run in, in the direction, and we'll be talking about that function uh, in the uh, next tutorial. So you can see that we're going to um, call the function move head, and uh, the, uh, the the stage. Your program is going to listen every single frame. Uh, it's going to ca call the function move head repeatedly. So this function is going to be called a lot, 24 or 60 frames per second. Okay, let's start studying this function called move head. It's going to move the snake. Uh, so we see here there's this variable called keyframe equals frame num divided by span and so uh, the frame number is the frame num the number that we're at. It starts at zero and every single time we enter the frame uh, the frame num is increasing by one. Frame num plus plus means it's going to increase by one. This is the equivalent to saying frame num equals frame num plus one. So span, if you look at the top of the uh, this file here, it's equals to 20. So basically, uh, um, oh, this <coughs> uh, statement, uh, frame num divided by span equal equals keyframe, is only going to happen every uh, 20 frames. OK, this is kind of interesting. Uh, the keyframe variable, remember that it's an integer. So I'm going to press Control F, pound, pound, pound. I kind of marked it here. This is a good way to find your code quickly. So keyframe equals frame num and divided by span. If I trace it, you can see I'm always getting zero, 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 zero. The reason why it's rounding, uh, even though it should be uh, 0.85, it's like it's truncating it down to the to the floor value, to the lowest, uh, <clears throat> chopping off all the decimal places. The reason why it's doing that is because it's an int, so you get zero, 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 zero. And when I actually trace frame num divided by span, we actually get a decimal number because the, uh, this is not an int. So you're getting 0 0.8, 0 0.85, 0 0.9, and 0.95. And I, as I look at the output here, finally you get 1 and 1. And in the case where you are dividing uh, the, um, you're dividing a frame num of uh, 20 divided by the span of 20. And finally, the you get the value 1, and the keyframe, even though it's an int, is 1 over here. And this uh, also, uh, every uh, 20 frames or so, this uh, frame num divided by span is also 1. <clears throat> finally, um, this condition is true, and so uh, this uh, code is executed. It's the idea of uh, things not happening all the time. You want things not to happen all the time and this is one technique to be honest when I look at this it's a little bit confusing uh, mixing uh, integers and non-integers but uh, if you look up uh, the purpose of modulus uh, you might want to use the modulus operator. It might be an easier way of understanding this depending on your experience with coding. Anyhow, let's see what code is run every once in a while. Every once in a while, every 20 frames or so, we have an if statement. If uh, direction is left, then we're going to say head.x minus equals head width. So we're going to basically move to the left one square by the width of the actual head. Head.x minus equals the same thing as saying head.x equals head.x minus head width. Otherwise, if it's up, it's going to do move up, and then the same with writing down. And every time you actually do move, we're going to reset the frame number back to zero. Okay, we'll be continuing on the next video. Stay tuned.